Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Voices of Forestry podcast. I'm your host, Seth Stevenson, the communications coordinator with the Arkansas Forestry Association. And today I'm joined by my boss, Executive Vice President Max Braswell, over the phone. We're uh, doing some working from home here today and uh, was able to get him via phone. So, Max, thank you for uh, joining me again. Well, it's great to be with you, Seth, even uh, long distance. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's been uh, almost two years since we sat down for the first time and, and did this podcast. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to get you back on. Uh, we kind of wanted to take a second and do a little retrospective look at the past two years since we first started doing this in February of 2020. Jeez, it seems like forever ago. And uh, just kind of talk about that and talk about what AFA kind of looked at and what we were doing back in 2021, just to give folks an idea of uh, some of the things that we've been doing. Um, so, Max, let me let me ask you this while, while we're t- on it. Uh, it's been two years, and I know you've listened to every episode religiously. <laughs> How do you think the, the show has been going? Well, I, I think it's been uh, great, Seth. Of course, I... You know, I've got some inside information because on a normal day, I work just around the corner from you. And so, uh, you know, we talk about this. Uh, you know, we tried to do something new for the, the Arkansas Forestry Association and for the really the forestry community by creating uh, one of, if not the first, association-based podcast. And so, you know, we had a goal to reach out to a group of, of listeners out there that maybe we don't have the opportunity to interact with on a on a daily basis like some of of our AFA members. Uh, and I think you know I think we accomplished that. We appreciate those folks that have tuned in um, for the past almost two years. Uh, you know, you you as you've reported uh, to us, you know, our listenership has grown. Uh, you know, we've reached a lot of folks out there across. Uh, the United States and even from uh, some some foreign countries, you know. So I'm I'm really pleased with uh, with the podcast. Uh, appreciate the work that you've done on it, and we're you know I'm excited about uh, 2022 and and uh, some of the things that we're, we'll get a chance to talk about this year. Yes, and I, I probably don't say this enough, but you, dear listener, you are you guys are what what makes this possible to see the success that we've seen having never done anything like this before has been unreal. And we really appreciate you guys checking in with us every month, listening, giving us feedback, you know, showing your support for the show. So again, we couldn't have done this without you. And this is what's been able to make us grow, to get new equipment, to get sponsors, to get more ears to what, what we've been trying to do this whole time. And that's tell our story, provide education to those who may are, who are seeking it or who may not know what, what it is that we do. So thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate that. Seth, I, I mean, you've got, you've got the numbers most of the time. I'll turn the tables on you. And instead of being the interviewee, I'll be the mm-hmm. interviewer. Uh, maybe can you give our listeners some, some idea of what some of the more popular topics were that we, we covered uh, I know you've mentioned that the very first one where I was the guest was the is the most listened. I don't mm-hmm. I, I don't any um, yeah you know, I, I don't I can't take credit for that. <laughs> but I know we've had, you know we know we had several that uh, have have garnered a lot of attention out there. So what are some of the ones that have been most popular? Yeah, it's for sure. So consistently, uh, the two most popular episodes that we've had so far have been forestry economics with Dr. Matt Pelkey and invasive species with chandler barton uh i know the let's see the forestry economics episode was in july of 2020 and the invasive species episode was in october of 2020 so if you guys haven't listened to those episodes go check them out they they are they have been very popular and as you can probably imagine the forestry economics numbers jumped up here this last year when all the lumber prices started skyrocketing uh i'm sure people were out there trying to figure out what in the world was going on and that was a good place for them to get a little bit of information on how the economics of everything kind of works out you know it's interesting that 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 is popular because we know uh that our members are interested in forced economic data Mm -hmm. and market 
data as well. When we go out and ask our members and folks within the forestry community what they would like to learn more about, consistently they come to us and say, hey, talk to us about uh, the, the markets for our products, what's driving the, uh, the forced economic story out there. So um, it's gratifying to know that that's a, a general topic of interest to folks out there. And, and I think, um, you know, we don't have to do it now, but that's a, that's a great lead into a topic that, that maybe we can touch on a little bit later uh, in the podcast today about kind of what, uh, what that uh, skyrocketing lumber price was all about so. yeah for sure for sure i know that was something that we were hoping to talk to you guys about today just to kind of bring it up because that was a big part of 2021 for for a lot of folks not even us here in the forester industry just everyday people uh we're seeing this this large increase so i know we want to get to that here a little bit later but max i tell you what r- real quick before we get into kind of what we were doing as afa in 2021 uh, I know, again, you and I have been talking about what we kind of want to do for 2022. So let's kind of get into that for just a hot second. And uh, and then we can get back into 2021 for a, for a little bit. Sure. You know, uh, from podcast perspective, you know, we want to continue to educate the listeners. You know, we, we sat down and in just a few moments came up with, you know, probably 40 plus different topics that we thought would be of interest to folks. So we want to continue to broaden uh, the scope of understanding about uh, what forestry and the timber products industry means today. Uh, You know, we have so many great stories to tell in 2022. I know we've talked about um, there's a particular uh, organization out there called Keeping It in the Family, Uh, just a really unique program that uh, focuses on helping folks keep their forests as forests within their family structure and some of the challenges that family forest owners, um, you know, particularly maybe in our minority communities face uh, when it comes to maintaining those forest holdings. And, and so it's a, it's a very, very interesting uh, story to tell, and we, and we want to tell that. You know, we, we've got so many different things, again, that happen on a daily basis within the forestry community that uh, I think if, if we can share those with an external audience, it'll give them an insight into uh, the kind of things that are discussed in um, uh, every place from a corporate boardroom to standing out in the middle of a forest that's been growing and vibrant for a hundred years to uh, so many of the different things that we deal with to create those uh, sustainable, healthy forests for people uh, to enjoy. Uh, and I mentioned in, in a recent conversation, in the 30 plus years that I've been a part of this industry, uh, the vast majority of the time we're talking about everything about our forest except uh, cutting trees and making products into them it, uh, from them. It's all of the other things that go into creating those healthy forests that ultimately um, provide an opportunity for an economic return and for the 5,000 products that we use every day. And so most of the stories that we'll tell in 2022 will be all about all of those related things from a forestry perspective that that uh, that we appreciate. And one other thing that I'm hoping to maybe do a little bit more of, I know we did it a little bit in 2020, not so much in 2021, is get back and talk to some of our landowners that we work with, hear the stories of their land, you know, why why it's so valuable to them and why they want to see it flourish and not just use it as a tree producing machine. Um, a lot of our folks are out there managing their land for wildlife, not necessarily for uh for trees to cut down and turn into product kind of like what you were talking about max but they have other other uses for it and that's why they manage it and make sure that everything is sustainably done and i i kind of want to get more of them behind the microphone this coming year just just to hear from our people uh some of our members even but and we we've told uh uh, our our own folks out there that the stories that we get from our private family forest owners 
are some of the best stories that we have to tell because just like you pointed out these are folks that uh, take pride in owning their land uh, in managing it effectively uh, many of them have had this forest land in their families for years and years they want to do the right things on the landscape uh, and they have a variety of objectives that they're trying to meet uh, and really all of them work well together when you create healthy forests you create great wildlife habitat you create aesthetic beauty we certainly uh, are now getting more and more into the impact of carbon sequestration and forestry as a natural climate solution another topic that hopefully we can touch on here today um, and and so we'll we'll get a chance to weave a lot of those themes and stories into uh, the podcast in 2022 and man our our best stories come from those folks uh, just like any regular person out there listening who um, dedicates their lives to uh, growing and enhancing our healthy forests well, so I, if that's not a tease right there, folks, I'm not 100% sure what what is. So that's some of the things that we're kind of looking at going into 2022 that you guys can look forward to here in the coming year. But now let's take a look back at 2021 and some of the things that AFA has been doing, some of the things we've been working on over this past year leading up to where we are currently. And Max, I would be remiss if we didn't start with one of the first big things that you have to deal with just about every other year, and that's the General Assembly that that we had in 2021. Um, I know you were spending a lot of time at the Capitol, um, and if not at the Capitol, you were in a Zoom meeting, watching, listening in on some of the things going on with the General Assembly. So what were some of the what were some of the big pieces of legislation that you were watching this past year? Well, and, I, and I'll preface that, uh, Seth, by reiterating the fact that you, you mentioned uh, telling our story was such a part of, of our goals for 2021. And although you might not think about it, the work that we do from an advocacy perspective uh, is a part of telling that story. Uh, because really, as a, as a lobbyist, as a professional lobbyist, which is m- one of my main responsibilities uh, here in AFA, you know, the, the, the aspect of communicating uh, the needs, the issues, the concerns of our sector uh, is about uh, telling our story to a group of legislative leaders, a group of policy makers, um, the folks that will make the decisions about the laws that we follow, the, the rules and regulations that impact our industry. Um, and it's, it's about communicating a credible story, a factual story, and going through that process of relationship building, uh, which again is so much of what we do in the forestry community. Um, And and it starts uh, in January every other year when we have a General Assembly. This was the 93rd um, General Assembly here in Arkansas, and it was a very busy session for AFA in the forestry sector. It was a unique session because it came in the midst of this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, we entered into this uh, legislative session wondering about how much face-to-face interaction that we would have with legislators and how they would interact with each other. It was truly a unique scenario, but ultimately it didn't impact the effectiveness of Um, AFA and the partners that we work with from a legislative standpoint, I don't think it impacted the effectiveness of the General Assembly, and it was an extremely busy session for us. Uh, You know, I won't go into everything because we could be here all day, uh, but but I will say that we were extremely busy. We probably worked more pieces of legislation than we've ever worked. Uh, We worked to help pass legislation that helped our logging community out there, uh, created uh, a new uh, permitting process that allows them to more effectively move the heavy equipment that we operate with these days. And so that was a a really uh, good piece of legislation. You know, we worked for for landowners who continue to battle the the feral hog problem. Talk about an invasive species. Feral hogs uh, fit right into that. 
you know, we ensured that the forestry sector was well represented on our Arkansas State Plant Board, um, and we helped defeat a measure that would have weakened our long-standing, very successful Arkansas voluntary best management practices for water quality. Um, there were a number of other issues that were out there, but you know, we started off our year telling our story through the public policy process and i think we told it effectively um, if you measure it by the success that we had in the general assembly back in 2021 and that's something that i think you and i discussed quite a bit about in the first episode is how big advocacy is to our association this is a big part of what we do making sure that everything is is good for every part of the forestry sector and as you can hear here dear listeners that uh max is very busy, not just uh, this past year, but most years we have a General Assembly. He's very busy up there working with the legislators, again, telling our story, trying to make sure everything is, is good for for our good Arkansans working out in the forest. Well, and when we talk to our members, we ask them uh, on a regular basis, you know, what, are, what are the most important things that you need from your association with AFA? What's the number one value driver? And it has consistently been, since we started up in 1947, advocacy. Uh, folks, uh, you know, they, they want AFA to work on their behalf to create public policy that provides a playing field that allows them to be successful, allows them to meet their objectives, uh, to wisely manage their forests, to be profitable in what they do. Uh, you know, we, we got to be honest. This is not a social experiment. This, these are businesses and business people and family forest owners that have, are investing their finances, their resources, and their lives. And in order for them to continue to do that and to continue to reinvest in growing and utilizing and keeping those forests healthy, they have to have a return on that investment. And so by creating public policy that allows us to do that uh, in a great state like Arkansas, that's the primary reason that we exist uh, here at the Arkansas Forestry Association. Now, Max, we keep talking about telling our story, and we've kind of explained that a little bit with you know, telling our story at the Capitol, using the podcast to do that and get education out there to people. But we've been doing a lot of other things, too. We did a lot of other things in 2021. Some things we've done before, some things are new, uh, but we were actually able to get to a quote-unquote somewhat normal <laughs> year with some of our events coming back. Uh, I know Night with the Travs was a big one, specifically, that a lot of folks were able to join us uh, for that. Yeah, it was the first big in-person event that we uh, were able to to hold in 2021. And, and yeah, we, we kind of laughingly said we, we, we almost got there. We almost <laughs> returned. Well, uh, COVID doesn't seem to want to uh, to let us get completely back. But, you know, our goal was to to try to return to a sense of normalcy you know the, the folks that we work with um, within the forestry community really value those networking opportunities um, you know we still are able to carry out the work that we want to do on a daily basis uh, virtually but you cannot uh, diminish or underestimate the value of networking and people uh, being with their friends, their colleagues. Um, that's just you know kind of what community is all about. So, so we were able to to have our night with the Arkansas Travelers um, in May. It's something that we've done now for several years, and it basically is just an opportunity for us to come together without any kind of business agenda and have a great night. And so we were able to do that. Um, wonderfully perfect evening for baseball, fireworks after the game, um, and it just kind of typifies um, what it's what we're all about here uh, at AFF. You know, we we wanted to be um, uh, returning to those uh, programs where we were networking with our membership through our uh, our our projects that we do, the workshops uh, like our. Uh, women owning woodlands workshop our our project learning tree workshops uh, getting back in touch with our emerging leaders um, all of those types of things helped us ramp up our interaction with uh, the our network of folks within the forestry community 
And that's a big part of this community. I'm starting to, or I learned pretty quickly when I first started here was how much our folks specifically value being able to get together with people from various organizations or various companies just to sit down and talk, not, you know, not talk business or talk shop, just to sit down and see each other. Um, and so I think that was one of the bigger hits that our folks took was not being able to get together in person to have that interaction. So it's a, I was glad to see a lot of our folks finally getting together and, and being able to see each other and talk once more. Absolutely. And, you know, we'll hope to be able to continue to do that in 2022. You know, uh, folks have learned to be flexible. We've learned as an organization that we can continue to be successful, even if we have to do it uh, virtually. Uh, but again, there's nothing that can replace uh, being able to have that face-to-face -face interaction uh, with folks out there. And, and I guess, you know, um, you know, Seth, you mentioned some of the newer things that we did. Um, you know, some of those we had to do uh, from a virtual perspective. And again, telling our story to an external audience. And I'm thinking about our, our work on Good Morning Arkansas with one of the, the local affiliates, television affiliates here, where we had some opportunities to, to kind of... Uh, reach a new audience in 2021 yeah afa had a bit of a tv debut going into 2021 with with the good morning arkansas opportunities we were able to do three episodes where we talked about uh we, we talked about afa in the first one we talked about forest products in the second one and we talked about the benefits of managing your land i believe in the third one with some help from our friends over at quail forever and we also worked with some people with a lot of people actually with America's forest with Chuck Lavelle. I know Max, that was a big thing that you were kind of working to get together here over the past year or so. Yeah, that, that, uh, and, and, and this, this mention, I guess on the podcast, again, is sort of a teaser because those programs have yet to air, but mm -hmm. they'll be for soon. Uh, in case folks don't know, Chuck Lavelle is the keyboardist for this it's small group, the Rolling Stones. Um, you've probably heard of them. Uh, also uh, played with folks like the Allman Brothers, toured worldwide um, as a professional musician. Uh, he is also the national spokesperson for uh, the, the tree farm program. He's a tree farm owner. Um, and he had the opportunity in 2021 to come to Arkansas and spend some time with some of our folks, with our state forester, Joe Fox, uh, and really uh, paint a picture, we hope, visually and through music and uh, through his um, interpretation and others of what forestry is all about here in the state of Arkansas. And we'll, we'll be able to have a couple of programs. Uh, we're working with uh, the uh, PBS to, to get those uh, on the air as soon as possible. And, and sort of, again, like the, uh, like the theme of, of the messages that we've been communicating, it just fits right in, in showing people, what forestry and what the forest products community and what our natural state of Arkansas is all about and, and how all of those things fit together and really how we work together in this state uh, to make sure that we take care of our natural resources, but that we also utilize them wisely because we depend on them here in Arkansas. So we're really looking forward to, uh, to Chuck being on the air and talking about, uh, forestry in arkansas yeah those uh those stories hit a little bit different when you get the help of a rock star to tell them um so i know we're all very excited about those and looking forward to that and if you are too if you're interested in what those are i'm sure once they go live or once they air we'll be posting on our facebook page um and you can find out get some more information on there so keep an eye out on our social media for when those are set to air with pbs um, so Max, I guess, is there anything else that you kind of wanted to talk about that we've been doing? I know those were some of the big, big ones. Um, we were actually able to hold an annual meeting, a hybrid of sorts. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to discuss that a little bit, the kind of getting back to getting together and having a quote unquote normal ish year. Well, let's, I, I want to touch on just a couple of more things yeah. before we wrap. 
I know we've been at it now for for a a little bit of time, but, you know, all of these stories and themes kind of did roll into our our annual meeting Uh, up in Rogers. uh, We had uh, just really a fantastic group of presenters that that talked about forestry as a natural climate solution. Uh, We've talked about carbon. We've talked about uh, carbon sequestration. Whether you wherever you fall on the climate change spectrum, forestry is a part of the conversation. It's a part of the solution. And so we wanted to talk about that. And that was a theme that kind of evolved this year um, as the the topic of, of sustainable forest management came up. We captured that at our annual meeting. Uh, we were able to bring in uh, folks from the National Alliance of Forest Owners and even representatives from the Environmental Defense Fund, uh, an environmental group that perhaps uh, the community has been somewhat adversarial with in the past, but who is very interested in forestry and public policy that uh, creates some of the same results that we're interested in. And so uh, through those collective partnerships, we began to build uh, a relationship and a dialogue. And we explored um, some of the things that we have in common, uh, some of the challenges that we want to pursue together during our annual meeting. We talked about uh, the the ongoing interest in using more wood in the built community. If you're growing trees that are sequestering carbon, why not take the next step in utilizing that fiber in our built communities? Because the fiber, the wood is going to continue to sequester that carbon. Uh, So we were able to do that. We were able to showcase one of the best examples of that new use of wood, the new technology that's out there uh, through uh, featuring uh, a representative from Walmart. Uh, They're they're, there. Again, uh, we worked with some pretty big folks in in 2021 and and Walmart's the largest company in the world or one of them. uh, um, And they're they're going to be using uh, a a relatively new product, cross laminated timber in the construction of their new campus up in Bentonville. So we were right there in their backyard. We had a chance to uh, to talk with them about why they're going to be utilizing more of the of the CLT product. Uh, we, we were able to talk about a company called Structure Land, who's now in Conway, that's going to manufacture the product, not only for Walmart, but hopefully for many, many other customers uh, throughout the South and throughout the world using uh, Southern Yellow Pine. Um, and then we were able to tour the campus of the University of Arkansas, where we saw two buildings that have been constructed there, um, the Adohi Hall, a dormitory on campus, and their library annex building uh, that have been constructed using cross-laminated timber. And so all of those types of things, uh, along with the new Anthony family um, Timberland Center for Materials and Design Innovation that's going to be constructed on the University of Arkansas campus. Uh, all of these types of things are evolving uh, sort of at the same time to, again, showcase the value of our healthy force and the products that come from them and the value that we get from those forests. Uh, not only from just putting a, a, a table uh, in your home, but really the impact on our lifestyle and on our healthy uh, lives by what we can get from the forest out there. Uh, and then I guess finally, I'll, I'll touch Seth really quickly mm-hmm. on, on the on the lumber issue and the lumber prices. Uh, yes, 2021 was a banner year from uh, the perspective of uh, our lumber manufacturing sector and the uh, profitability that they were able to enjoy from for the first time in a long time having a market out there that had an extremely high demand for lumber. Now, those who purchased it knew um, and experienced some sticker shock out there, but uh, lumber prices are, are, are attached to a commodity that, that fluctuates. It has its ups and has its downs. And 2021 was, was an up year. Uh, but they're very cyclical. Uh, they're very tied to the housing market. Um, and although it's not etched in stone as to what exactly created the, the rising lumber prices, there are a lot of strong theories 
Um, uh, many of them tied to the impact of COVID-19, uh, the fact that when we first entered into the worst stages of it, we felt like that the economy as a whole was probably going to shut down. Uh, housing markets were going to crumble. And so mills made decisions that they either uh, curtailed their production or closed or had to have some layoffs and things like that. But then suddenly we had everyone at home and we saw an uptick in remodeling. Um, housing did not fall off significantly. In fact, it continued to be strong. Um, and so all of those types of things kind of then reshook the marketplace um, and the mills had to adapt to that rising demand. And although the demand was there quickly, it takes time for those mills to ramp up uh, much of their production that would have gone into the construction a uh, industry had to be transferred to the retail market for those folks that were doing those um, home remodeling projects and things like that. And so uh, it was sort of a perfect storm for uh, the lumber market to be strong. Uh, now, probably not one single factor within that story was the driving factor, but there were a combination of things that, that took place out there uh, that made those lumber prices high. Uh, and, you know, the good thing is, is that the manufacturers had the opportunity to reap those benefits. Many, many of them reinvested those dollars into improving their facilities, um, you know, we saw improvements and things like of those natures that allowed them to continue to employ people, to create more jobs, uh, to try to attract folks into their facilities to, again, meet the demand uh, for the kinds of products that we use every day. So, um, yes, the, the prices was, were high. Uh, it's a very cyclical market and, and they never stay high. They always have to, to, uh, to find a balance. But that was a real story in 2021. Um, and frankly, I hope our lumber manufacturers continue to be profitable and have good markets out there because, again, healthy markets for us equal healthy forests because it provides the impetus for us to go out there and continue to do the things that we need to do uh, from a forestry perspective. Now, I don't know about you, Max, and you probably had this a little worse than I did, but I couldn't go anywhere with family without them asking me, hey, what the heck is going on with the lumber prices? Um, I, I know that hit a lot, a lot of people, even outside of the community, the forestry community, and there was uh, some confusion. So I'm glad that we were able to, to touch on that here today, just, just even a little bit. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and I, had, I got the same kind of questions. It garnered a lot of attention from the media. We answered a lot of media questions. It garnered a lot of attention even from members of Congress uh, who had meetings about high lumber prices and, and, and talked to amongst themselves and, and uh, uh, asked questions of our friend, the Congressman Bruce Westerman, the only degreed forester in Congress. Uh, uh, to provide his input into helping us understand how uh, these markets work and, and how they're related to other components of our economy. So again, it gave us the opportunity to tell the forestry story. Thank goodness we have friends um, like Congressman Bruce Westerman. Uh, we sure appreciate what he does uh, for us. And, and again, it really just, um, it was sort of uh, an interesting uh, way to again be able to educate folks about uh, the timber and forest products community well max is there anything else i'm looking at our little cheat sheet and i think we've kind of touched on just about any or everything that we wanted to talk about but is there anything else that you want to add here real quick before uh we start wrapping things up i think we i think we've covered it seth i hope uh folks uh you know kind of have a uh, an understanding and appreciation of uh, our industry now more some 21 episodes into mm -hmm. our podcast again i'll say how much we appreciate uh, folks listening um we we want to be uh, facilitators of, of good information out there and we look forward to 2022 uh, getting back to normal as quickly as possible and continuing these voices of forestry podcasts and, and thank you for getting me back on uh <laughs> with you who knew it would take two years to get someone who works 20 feet away from me to back on the on a podcast well anytime <laughs> but i know that a lot of folks out there that are more interesting than me 
but I'm here to help. So. Well, Max, hey, we appreciate it, and uh, we want to let you guys, like we said, keep an eye out here coming up in the coming months because I'm sure terms like carbon sequestration, uh, building with wood, all of these things you're going to see more about as we uh, attempt to go a little bit deeper in some of these topics that we've uh, tried to set up over the past two years. We're going to start digging a little deeper on those topics to give you guys more information about what what we're doing in the forestry community and what, what are some of the things that we're looking at as we move forward, uh, not only in 2022, but 23 and so on and so forth. But again, we want to thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or any anything you would like to ask us, you can find our contact information on our website at arcforest.org. That's A-R-K-F-O-R-E-S-T-S dot org. And as always, we want to give a special thank you and shout out to Rob McCormick slash some guy named Rob for the use of our theme song, The Same Love. That's off of his album, The Folkster. We'll link his website where you can find more of his music. And he's also got it on Spotify if you want to give a listen to what he's got going on over there. Join us next month as we have a new topic, a new guest, and a new voice of forestry.